Hey, I'm Harry from PB Tech, and today we have a very special guest. We've got Lara from Using Technology Better. Hi, Hi Harry. Hi, Hi, people. So please, Lara, tell us about what you do. So I work for a company called Using Technology Better as a digital trainer. We work with schools and businesses across New Zealand, Asia, and Australia as well. We work with schools on an individual basis to help support teachers, and we also deliver workshops. Explain to me what STEM is. Okay, cool. Great question. So you've said STEM. At Using Technology Better, we look at it as STEAM. STEAM, so Yeah, cool. so we've got science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics. And the arts is one that often gets missed out. But basically it's bringing those subjects to the forefront. And when we think about the arts, we're not talking your painting, your drawing, your music, although that's involved in the creativity and innovation, but we're actually looking at arts as the humanities and society, ethics and values, and bring all that into how technology is being used. So how do we help your company yeah, get ahead? Cool. So we've got a great relationship with PB Tech. Um, they've been supporting using technology better for a long time, helping us to deliver great training as well as supplying us with gear and equipment we need. We know that you guys are reliable so we can spread that message across to schools as well. Cool. We've actually brought in a few products today. One you'd like to grab first to show us? Well, I think we'll start with, with this little dude here. So this is a Spark Plus from Sphero. They have a range of different little robots like this, but this is the one that we use the most. It's really durable. Woo. Great for in schools. Yeah. <laughs> you can throw it around. I'm always worried it's going to crash at that point, but, cool. so, but it's um, okay. So how many of these would be in a classroom? Well, I guess teachers are really adaptable in terms of how many resources they have. So whatever you have, you can use. And we like to partner people up with this, working in teams of three so that they can really collaborate and develop those skills too. So anything from having one in your class to having one one-to-one -one of these, but we use the school set, which comes with, you buy 10 spheres and you get two free. Cool, yeah. PB Tech. PB Tech. Make sure you buy it, yeah. PB Tech. <laughs> How can I use this to further educate my kids? So I'll just tell you a little bit about what this is first and what's inside it. So inside this lovely little ball, you've got an accelerometer, a gyroscope, um, LED lights and all sorts of amazing things which makes it a pretty incredible piece of tech. You can use Sphero EDU app on your iPad to code the Sphero and it'll connect with Bluetooth and, and run through whatever you've coded it for. And what's really cool is the scalability of this tool. So there's three ways you can code the Sphero with drawing, you can use block coding and you can also write script for it too. So lots of scalability in there. So often we use mazes so we'll put a maze out or some sort of rescue operation for the Sphero to have to get through. Um, to, to do the rescue or to get to the end of the maze and it can turn into quite complex code and you see such a difference across what students or teachers because we do the same thing in workshops what they'll come up with to try and get there and that's a real part of the digital technologies curriculum too is lots of different ways to do the same thing and then improving on that code as well. And also I noticed it's got awesome LEDs inside. I know, and it's just so cute and friendly looking. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it is like your little friend, yeah. So it's got LED lights so you can program it to change colours. It has a gyroscope and an accelerometer which, which lifts it to that NCEA secondary digital technologies curriculum. Yeah. We've heard of a school actually up here in Auckland that have strapped these to the kids and no put way. them on the roller coasters at Rainbow's End wow. and then collected that live data back yeah. to understand the velocity and all those sorts of changes too. So That's amazing. Plus, the way you get the data back shows you the X and the Y axis. All of that understanding that's been left till quite late in the curriculum for maths can be brought in much earlier. You can actually even put it in paint and paint with this. Wow. Or put the spheros in the dark and recorded their pathways with changing lights. So coded it to do something and recorded that with long exposure. Wow. Talk me through the app. So yeah. is there its own app for the Sphero? Yeah, so the app's called Sphero EDU. Once you go into it and create a new program, you get this, so you can choose between drawing blocks and text like we talked about, and then the type of Sphero you have. The other thing I really like about the app is the Sphero community and the resources available on the community. So this is a whole lot of tutorials that take you through from the initial steps with drawing right through to how to text with Java code and then how to put it into practice with other activities. Perfect. It's pretty cool. And those yeah. tutorials, as a teacher, you can step by step go through those tutorials um, and learn for yourself those steps before the kids even try. I think what Sphero does is it takes a really engaging tool that's really good value for money for what it is. It's really durable so kids can get their hands on and actually really have a go and, it, and the block coding has changed how kids learn to code. The buzz in the classroom when kids are using Sphero or tools like Sphero is awesome. Thanks so much for sharing. No worries. Who has a buzz?